Hi everybody, and welcome to my top three favorite types of gay dudes. Now let me tell you, actually my favorite type is all my fans. Um, I don't know how to say thank you enough. Like life's a funny thing. I would have never thought uh, like making content for a primarily gay audience would be like the one thing I was ever uh, successful at. You'd see so you guys are the reason I'm in this new apartment and I appreciate all the comments from everybody else too. But I'm gonna be honest, there's one demographic that's pulling out that credit card. Um, that's the demographic, man, I've never, uh, you know, I've never, um, let's just call it done Shakespeare. You know, I like to, I'm an entertainer and I, I put on a lot of Shakespeare, the type of Shakespeare that requires a credit card to see. And I, I did my first Shakespeare performance with another man um, yesterday. And I would have never, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I don't do Shakespeare with other men in my personal life. So it's just something I never would have thought. And uh, I got a great response for it. And I've been blessed with many rewards. And I just, I can't say thank you enough. Uh, I try not to ramble. So without any further ado, let's get into it. My number three favorite type of gay dude is the Southern Dandy. Think of like uh, Kevin Spacey's, Ke ooh, kind of creepy seeing what he did now. Because I think in that movie he, yeah, he killed a young boy. But anyways, Kevin Spacey's character in Midnight in, of, in the Garden of Good and Evil, the kind of like, oh, I have a certain predilection towards the more phallus-shaped desire. Happy, happy, happy. You know, like that, that type. He's, I think in the movie he was like an antique collector. You know, these guys will typically have like a certain level of expertise and like what they're into. They're kind of like Renaissance man in, in a way. The, the, there is a, a flip to this coin though. Um, the closeted Southern dandy is very dangerous. They, they, they try to pass a lot of laws and you know, they're <laughs> Lindsay. I, I don't know who Lindsey Graham is, but I'm pretty sure. Am I, am I right on that? He's one of those Southern guys. That's like, I think gay people are by it. And he's like, you know, clearly a little bit, you know, you got a little sugar and more sugar in the tank than me. That's for sure. So there's a, that, that, those can be a very powerful force for good and evil. Maybe that's why the book was called Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. And this is, this is where I'd probably fall. If I was a, number two, if I was a gay dude, this is definitely what I would be. It's, it's surprised it was edging out for one, number one. And that's toxic masculine gay dude. So I never, um, you know, I didn't grow up knowing like anything about like the LGBT community really. Um, in my school, there wasn't, there was like, you know, the kids you knew were gay and there's one that was openly gay, but I didn't really know them. And then, you know, growing up, I didn't, I didn't really know any either. And then it wasn't until prison and meeting gay Mike. And then I was later in a parole violator camp and we were like stuck in the cell for 18 hours a day. And my bunkie there was a, a gay black guy. And I'm, yeah, it was kind of like, it wasn't like some lifetime movie, like, oh my gosh, American history X, but it was like, I, I just didn't think that we would have so much in common to like hold a conversation like we did. And it was just kind of, kind of like an ignorant thing. It wasn't like hateful. It was just like, oh, those people are different than me. So <laughs> I, I rambling a little bit there, but toxin, toxic masculine gay dude. So this is something I didn't know. Like I said, this is something I didn't know about that. There's um, like, it seems like specifically white, like cis straight or gay guys. Uh, get really shit on by the rest of the LGBT community. Like I, uh, I didn't know that, but I kind of caught it a little bit and then looked into it. So like I was reading about a uh, mask for mask, which is like, I'm a masculine guy and I want another masculine guy and how that's considered rude because you know, it leaves people out or whatever. And I, and I like, first of all, I'm never of that thought anyways. Um, I don't, you know, your feelings, I don't know, think that feelings are protected. But after I got on Grinder, which is you know the best app for straight men, the do try putting a, a profile up on Grinder with a half decent looking picture. Your phone will go off, so you're gonna have to turn off notifications on your phone. It will drain your battery. If you put up a profile with no picture, and you'll you'll get tons of messages. I remember you know at one point I had pictures up on my profile just to try to you know meet the trans woman. And even when I would put it in my profile, hey, I'm not interested in men, just here for trans women, you still get a million messages. But at least like when you put something in your profile like that, it cuts it down. And I, I get the thought. The thought is that, oh, you're hurting somebody's feelings. Um, if you say, you know, no, we'll say, we don't have to do masculine. If you say no overweight people, that people, somebody overweight is gonna see that and their feelings are gonna be hurt. But what would have happened? No matter what, when nobody's sleeping with them or that person isn't sleeping with them, 
their feelings are going to get hurt. Either, either it's stated in the profile or you message them and they say, Hey, I'm not interested. The feelings get hurt. Or, you know, you message them and you're too afraid to say anything and you kind of lead them on and then eventually, you know, push comes to shove and you have to tell them, Hey, I'm not interested in that body type. No matter what the feelings are getting hurt. And I just, I don't think it's particularly more compassionate to uh, hide it. That's just, I think that's something you kind of have to get over. Um, to be honest, there's, like my type of look, a lot of trans women aren't into that. I'm not like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you'd be surprised, like not, uh, trans women, that, a lot of them I seem, they seem to like kind of more hipster, kind of nerdy guys, and that's that's okay. They should be, they're allowed to do that. But yeah, uh, oh, the other thing about the toxic mask guys, I, uh, I have a quote here. It's probably gonna be a little bit controversial. Um, he said, this was by, a person named Ted Kaczynski, <laughs> he said, leftist tends to hate anything that has an image of being strong, good, and successful. And I think this kind of extends to the LGBT community and um, what I've kind of perceived as like a totem pole ranking system of oppression. Like, okay, we're here, we're here. This like detonates our worth and how much, you know, our contribution to the conversation matters. And I think it, I think it like feeds into that, man, because, I, just because of history and how things were, a lot of the gay first, like first gay mayor, uh, uh, the heart was it? Harvey Milk, first international federation bodybuilder, IFBB pro, man, first non flamboyant gay character on TV, um, the dude from Dexter on Six Feet Under. You know, they just they got a lot of firsts, and I think uh, I think there's a thing, uh, just as an outsider, this is a thing I'm perceiving where like. I don't know, people uh, hate on success or something? I don't know. Maybe there's more to it, but, uh, you know, I know, like, people say, like, oh, they're, they're mean and vain, and it's like, yeah, they've been a little bit nicer to me than some of the other members of the community, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, you know, when I first, you know, started dating the trans woman, you know, I didn't expect the straight community to, like, be open arms. I didn't expect the, the blowback I got, but I, I didn't expect a great reaction. And I need, nor did I think like the LGBT community was going to be like, oh my, you're so brave. What an ally. But I was surprised at how I was viewed as eh, cis white man. And it, it was like, I felt like I was in between these two extremes because straight people think I'm half gay. <laughs> and then the LGBT community, I'm just eh, cis white man. So it was, I don't know. That was kind of a bummer for me too. I think I say this a lot, but I think it's this false narrative. There is a false narrative that like the popular, good looking, uh, athletic people are all mean. And it's like the nerds and all so-and-so that are nice because I don't, that's like some Hollywood shit. And guess who writes those Hollywood, uh, scripts, the theater kids. Cause in my experience, man, I, people aren't as open-minded as they, as they like to put off. You'd be surprised. It's just, you're open-minded to your, to your own type of people. And then, uh, you know, one one um, archetype of gay man I can really appreciate is the gay author. Um, you know, I'm sure there's like so many gay uh, men that were like great painters, probably all of them, I don't know, <laughs> but I don't know painters. I know like authors, uh, Truman Capote, James Baldwin, you know, Herman Melville, I wouldn't have thought of that one, uh, William S. Burroughs, I guess he's not typically associated, but kinda. Um, you know, some great, great authors. So it, the, yeah, the the just regular, successful gay dude one of my favorites sorry but it pales in comparison to my last which is the old school queen i'm talking like a john waters type these are the guys that like took the beating so people can walk around parades wearing only a baseball glove i think it was john waters said like yeah it was a lot cooler to be gay when it wasn't like acceptable and you had to sneak around and do it and i think you know i don't think anybody wants to go back to like the days of getting beat up and everything but it is kind of, man, like, I think people need to give up that, the, like, the act of rebellion. You know, you look at pride parades and Raytheon, you know, like, military industrial complex is, you know, has pride parade floats. I think it's just, it's unfortunately, it's become commercialized, and I don't think it's uh, the act of rebellion that it once was. Um, I still think uh, there's a little bit of a punk element to being trans, just because, and maybe that's why they're so cool, man. I think, like, uh, you know... 
having a little having a little adversity kind of builds character. And I think that's why the old school homos, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Okay, one of my, this just kind of comes back from uh, when I used to webcam, one of my first regulars was this dude, his username was old school homo. And I was like, what is that, like John Waters? He's like, no, it's like, I'm tough, I'm an OG. And I was like, oh, like tough. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. But yeah, anyways, going back to it. Yeah, man, I think these guys, man, they, they faced the real hardcore adversity and made some like great art because of it. Uh, it I just, uh, I don't see that, see that today. Um, yeah, I just, it, it's just like a much cooler thing. Let me show you one of my favorite examples. What was the interest to you then in that Campbell's soup tin? What gave you the idea of doing that? Oh, I used to eat it every day. I still do, so. And let me tell you, these are some of my best customers when I perform Shakespeare. They're so polite. Oh, let me, let me tell you about this. An, another thing about gay people are so much more polite. Um, when I perform Shakespeare alone, it's you know a primarily a, a gay male audience. People are so polite. I never have to moderate chat. Everything goes fine. When I would do a Shakespeare show with a with a chick, oh my God, people are insulting. They're calling me white trash. It's just. It's insane. It's a whole different vibe. So I think uh, you know a lot of the the the, the kind of old school gay dudes, man. They're, they're they're much more approachable, and I find that a lot of them too, like are kind of. A, you'd be surprised how many of them like have backgrounds in military. It's it's a little more diverse. It's not like the flamboyant. I mean, maybe, but it's a they're, they're a little bit tougher than what you would think, man. And it reminds me a little bit of of prison. In prison, the um, I guess the culture of the sissies is it reminds me if you've ever watched Pose, there was a part where like the younger trans woman, Bianca, really wanted to go to the popular new gay bar and they wouldn't serve her. And the older trans woman, Electra, was like, man, screw that. We'll have our own place and it will be better. Like we don't need their validation. And I find that that is much more the attitude in prison. And I think that's kind of the attitude with a lot of the uh, old school queens. For, for lack of a better, I'm trying to think of words that people won't find offensive. But that's the cool thing is those these people aren't um, obsessed with being offended. You can make jokes. They're easier to talk to. I think that's like a great thing for crossover and building bridges. Because not only are like they, they some of the greatest examples of being like very different, they're, they're, they seem to be much more approachable and friendly. And it, even this list is obviously made a little bit in jest. Um, the LGBTQ community has been so good to me. Um, I don't, I have to do an apartment tour. I'm, I'm 30 and I've never had my own place. And, uh, you know, it sucked not having like the support of my family, but I've never like had people telling me like, Hey, this stuff you make is good. Like my family knows I wrote a book and I've never asked to read it, you know? So it's like, man, I, I really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Please like, and follow it. Check out the website. I'll put the links up. I just, Thank you so much. I'm not, I, I don't fake this gratitude. Like I, I really appreciate it. Have a good night, everyone.